Look at the overall confidence in Sergei Adamchuk's appearance, his grin, everything as we face off for our second fight, this one again for the glory featherweight world title. Now, today we are breaking down the hardest victory of my career. This is against Sergey Adamchuk. Why was this fight so hard? Well, going into it, I had already experienced a loss against him. Mentally, that is very hard to overcome. You've got to flip the script and know that you can get that victory, but also recognizing that Sergey Adamchuk was undefeated in glory at this time. He got a couple wins before he faced me, then he defeated me in a close split decision, but then he went on to defeat Marat Gregorian, who is one of the scariest kickboxers at a higher weight class. Adam Chuck jumped up in weight, took the fight on short notice, and defeated Marat Gregorian again by a close split decision. Then from there, he went on, defended the glory title, again jumped up in weight, and fought another guy on short notice at a higher weight class, and was just steaming through everybody within glory. But I really wanted my glory title back, so I asked for this rematch, but it was definitely the hardest victory of my career. That is what we we're breaking down today. Now you guys on the channel know that I am very systematic when it comes to defeating opponents. I look at tapes of them, and then from there I build a game plan. And it was no different with Adam Chuck. The only massive difference was I knew exactly what had happened in the previous loss against him, and my camp and I knew we had to start doing some changes. Because in the first fight, I used my normal fight style which really heavily relies on pressure. I move forward, I throw lots of big combos, I try to put my opponent against the ring ropes. It did not work against Adam Chuck, which means we had to formulate a whole new game plan which means a whole new training camp. So today we're gonna to go through this fight and I'm gonna break down how I had to prepare differently, what I executed differently, but what also worked from my former fights, things that I've worked on my entire life. So here we go, opening rounds of the bout. First thing you will note is Adam Chuck is a southpaw. That means that things get changed up only when you have a southpaw who actually knows how to utilize that skill set, which Adam Chuck does. So we prepped up for this. You can note that I'm not standing square in front of him. I'm trying to take angles and the right round kick is being unleashed whenever I see the opportunity. Now, because Sergey Adam Chuck is such a smart fighter, he's not a southpaw who just stands there and just throws like everybody else. A southpaw is only dangerous when they're intelligent when they know how to angle off and step to the weaker arm, when they know how to cut an angle, punch, and then angle again. If they just stand there and fight a normal fight from a different stance, southpaw means nothing. But with Adam Chuck in the first fight, I realized, oh, this guy knows what he's doing. So for the second fight, we actually had to bring somebody in who understood southpaw tactics and explain them to me and show me how to counteract those. Very early in the fight, you see me throw Adam Chuck down, technically not allowed, but I just wanted to gain some respect from him early on. And the first fight he did some dirty stuff. So I just went, you know what? I'm gonna throw some stuff in here too and just throw you down and just show that the respect is not there. You do not own this fight. Now this next clip here was frustrating. We get to the clinch. Adam Chuck keeps working when we're on the inside and he causes a headbutt which cuts me open. This was so frustrating because in the previous fight where I was defending my glory title and lost to Adam Chuck, he headbutted me two times in the fight and I had blood running down impairing my vision, which was very difficult and frustrating in the middle of the fight. This one here, I came in, my plan was to avoid letting him, you know, get to that zone where we could clash heads. Stylistically, we just don't match up. We just, you know, if we're out here, we're not working enough. When we get here, we end up banging our heads together too much, but very frustrating opening section of the fight and something that mentally I just had to overcome. Back to the action. You can see right away that I'm trying to counter Adam Chuck as soon as he lets his hands go. He throws, I have to come back. That's something that enough people don't do well against him because he's a good counter fighter. And if you throw against him and let him counter, it does not work, but trying to let those hands go fast. Also trying to attack 
the lead leg, which is something which is vulnerable on the self paw, especially like Adam Chuck, where he's fairly heavy there. I want to take a quick pause and just point out something very unique that Adam Chuck did in this fight, which I had not seen previously, but actually worked fairly well. And it is his switch round kick down to the leg. So normally when people throw a round kick, especially from a southpaw stance or any stance, they just execute the kick. But Adam Chuck would lift his lead leg and then jump in to the low kick. Now to be honest in the fight, it didn't really bug me. Why did it not bug me? Well, he was not targeting me on the thigh. He was actually targeting my upper hip. I don't know if that was accident or not, but during the fight, no problem. After the fight, crazy pain. My leg or hip swelled up so much that I could only put shorts on that had little bands, you know, the flexible bands around the waist. I could not get on jeans because it was so swollen. This pain, this injury lasted for a whole month after the fight and it was so painful that very often in the middle of the night I would wake up, actually not very often, every night for a month I would wake up at 2 to 4 a.m. and I'd have to go to the washroom because I thought I was going to vomit because the pain was so intense. And I believe that was just because it was a bone bruise. Again, not something that you're going to feel in the fight, but after the fact, oh my gosh, it hurt. I want to touch on this little clip here where Adam Chuck has his hands out and he's just sort of playing that pawing game. And this is something, again, that we recognize he would do to opponents. He'd sit there, he'd paw, they'd reach out, try to match his hands, and then they leave openings and he'd come around the side. But you notice I'm not having any of that. That, I don't reach in I just go okay I'm gonna go forward and engage throw my combo that is a big part of defeating a tactical fighter like Adam Chuck you can't let them play their normal game if they start doing something they're doing it for a reason you just have to go no I'm not gonna play that and go about your business now in kickboxing round kicks off the arms do not score very high but we train for this a lot trying to throw the round kick have it come back and not allow Adam Chuck to counter. How do you go about doing this? Well, you catch somebody as they're moving back or your kick forces them back. Or if you stay within striking range, you kick. And as you come down, instead of putting your foot where it started, if you take a pre-step, so I pre-step, I kick where it started and then I angle off. Now I went from this point starting to this point on the finish and we work this a lot. Now, the reality is when you add in a brand new technique that is completely out of your regular arsenal, the chance of executing in a spectacular way is very small. And I did not have loads of success with it where it dominated the fight and it got me the win, but just adding it in, I think just threw Adam Chuck off a little bit and just gave me that extra little edge where he was going, oh shoot, you know, the kick's just coming and landing. Now, before we move on to round number two, where things really start to pick up for me, I start to build some good momentum. I wanna take a split second and give a shout out to X Marshall. I am loving this new brand of clothing, which I am wearing all the time now. This shirt here, it just cracks me up. I love it. The fit of all their clothes, this rash guard, these shorts, everything I've been wearing in so much of my training is just incredible. And if you're not into kind of goofy shirts, they have a whole bunch of rash guards that are super serious. So you can make your selection through the pages and pages of apparel they have, but it's not only apparel, they have loads of other gear, training equipment that just goes on for again, pages and pages. You guys can look down in the description. I have a link over to their site. You can use my code down below to save 10%. And I would suggest you head over and check out the X Marshall website. It is just fantastic gear. Moving into round two after a frustrating round one. And it was frustrating simply because of that cut and just having to go, darn it, I'm already at a disadvantage. I already have a cut open. I have to be extra cautious that I don't let them land on it because once you have a cut, if somebody lands a second time, a third time, it splits open more and more and more. So I had to come back to the second round and just rally. And early on in round two, I just want to point out a technique which I really like. Not necessarily that we train for this fight, but something that people should get good at nonetheless. When you throw a round kick, which I already mentioned I was working on, and you miss, you're left with a situation where if you drop down, the guy can attack you. And like we said, Adam Chuck is very good at counters. So I had to be very careful when I miss that I was ready to follow up. And you see me here, miss, and then jam him with the same leg without dropping. The ability to throw a kick, maintain it up, and then follow midair obviously comes from my karate background where you should do things like that all the time. So it's just 
an example of having a martial arts background in karate and how it benefits you in kickboxing. This right here is just a great example of what it's like fighting Adam Chuck. You land a nice shot, but then he gets right back on you. His counters are very good. I love this little bit of evasion there. The southpaw throws the round kick. You just take that little either step back or little evasion back, make them miss. You have to get good at that if you're fighting southpaws. Once again, in round two, we see a little bump of heads. I'm not happy about it. I complain. It's just, like I said, hard, hard fight to overcome because our styles just don't match up. Now, something interesting that you're going to note in this fight is very often you will see me have my hands higher than my opponent. I try to guard up the whole head, but in this fight, Adam Chuck has his hands higher than me. I have my hands a little bit lower. Why is that? Well, it's very simple. In the first fight, I tried to execute my high hands, tight guard, and it just was not working. I got lit up for it. So this time we went, you know what? We're gonna have to rely a little bit more on footwork, a little bit more on head movement. Hands are gonna have to come down because when your hands are here, it's very hard to incorporate head movement. When they're down here, a little bit easier. And it's just something, one of the changes that we had to make going into this fight. And here we go, my best moment of the fight. I told you we worked on counters. Adam Chuck comes in, he lands a shot, and I bang back with a quick swift combo, switching up levels and getting the knockdown. This was a massive confidence boost for me, going, okay, he can be hurt, I can tag him, and you know, just with that record that he had within Glory, being undefeated, going, yes, he can be beat. Now he recovers super fast, he doesn't look damaged. A lot of times when people have somebody injured, they come out just ready to kill, but I recognize, you know what, he's not hurt enough, and he can counter me, I need to be safe, and I need to make sure I don't get knocked down after just putting him down. But man, the counters are working. We drilled and drilled and drilled. Don't let him finish the combo. Don't let him finish the combo. And I did not execute every time in the fight, but when I finish, it works so well. He throws, and I come back with a fast, mean combo. Round two was a changing point in Sergey Adamchuk's career, I believe, because from there, and after, he was not able to regain the title. Granted, he had to go up against Robin Van Roosmolen, who is one of the scariest guys at our weight class. But then from there, he took some additional losses and just has never been able to regain the same footing that he once had over the featherweight division. Now, I'm not saying my punch was responsible for that because he bounced back up. But sometimes it just takes one small change and all of a sudden people go, hmm. This guy is not indestructible. And just being able to go bump, 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 bump and land that shot showed anybody in the featherweight division that this guy can be put down and he is not invincible. Even though prior to this, he looked like he was. Here we go, moving into round number three, Adam Chuck delivering that low kick, which just hurt my leg so much. But at the same time, me just firing back, just a fiery, speedy amount of punches, just making sure that I am winning each exchange or as many as I can. Now, I actually wanna draw attention to something which just popped in my head when I was watching the video going, oh, I remember my brother just screaming at me to stop doing this. And he was saying that as I was throwing my cross, I kept stepping in, stepping through. And I was doing this to try and close the distance because Adam Chuck is so good at backing up. But as my brother pointed out, and why he wanted me to stop, as you take your foot off the ground and you step through, you sacrifice a lot of power. What he wanted me doing was planting and making sure that I utilize footwork to get forward and let my hands go just as I scored my knockdown. You know, long arms, keeping everything at distance and really trying to make sure that if Adam Chuck backs up, that I stand my ground and wait for him to come back in or move both my feet and make sure that I'm able to punch with power. But I just wanted to bring that to your attention, something that he kept yelling at me in the fight, stop it, stop it, don't do that. Now I wanna look at this section here where there's just more pawing, more technical movement. Adam Chuck's backing up, he's probably waiting for me like the last fight to get very aggressive. And we're just playing that game and then landing the body round kick. What I really had to focus on in training camp is that not necessarily pressure is gonna win this fight. And I don't always need to be going forward because when I fought Adam Chuck the first time, the general consensus was this guy will not be able to deal with your pressure. Most people cannot deal with your pressure, but he could. He did a great job when I would come forward, angling off, tagging me. So in this one, you see more me just waiting, waiting, 
taking my time and then the single round kick comes i win the exchange even though not very much at all was done and once again just finishing with the body punches after the low kick something which i think made a world of difference in this fight like i said usually i keep my hands very high right here we see a lot more head movement a lot more rolling than you normally would see out of me and this was just a stylistic thing you know i'm watching the fight just going hands are really low but you know when your hands are low then you have the ability to slip which is just so much more helpful when you're fighting somebody like Adam Chuck. Something that I want to point out here in this little clip is a lot of people say it's very hard to find the liver on a southpaw. Reason being, they're this direction, that elbow's in front, it's a little bit harder to get around. I do not find that at all. And you can see in this clip here, just launching the body shot down there. You throw it, doesn't matter if the guy's orthodox, Southpaw, in my opinion, it lands the same. Because I was working with somebody on my right round kick for this fight, they were very Muay Thai oriented. You'll also see me execute the front kick and the Thai side kick occasionally. Both these techniques are very, very important to utilize in a fight where you are controlling range. It's a little bit more distance based. There's lots of fainting, lots of hand reaching. I don't execute as much as I wish I would have with that lead leg front kick because when I do throw it, I go, oh, it was working. Now, even though I did all the training to make this fight a little bit more distance based to not rush the pressure in round four, you see me still charge forward in my normal style. And in this one instance, it works very nice. I spring in with a flying knee, push him to the ring ropes with the round kick, close the distance, land a nice hook to the head, spin him back, and then we're into the clench, but a win for me in that exchange, no doubt. This was something we worked on heavily here. The round kick is somebody tries to circle away. Now, I don't normally think of the legs as ways to control people with their movement. If somebody moves this way, I usually utilize my footwork. But what I was taught in this fight is if somebody moves this direction, stop them with the right round kick every time they step that way, because they're building, they're feeding your momentum of the round kick. So just executing whenever they step will help control them. In the closing stages of round four, we see a big round kick from me following with the cross. This is something again, which I've worked on throughout the years. I can't honestly remember if it was in this training camp, which we worked at, or if it was previous ones. But the idea being once you've thrown enough round kicks and the opponent knows they're coming, they start reaching for them, then we come boom, boom. And it's just gonna land because the guy has to put his hands over here to block the round kick, which exposes just to the corner of the face. So being able to do that, boom, boom, in this fight, I actually really like that. I forgot that that was something I even landed in this bout. All right, moving into the fifth and final round. Scorecard, this is a very close fight. I knew I had to do a good job in this round, even though I'd scored the knockdown. Who's to say with judges? Nice Peter Arts push off head kick there. Didn't land but still nice execution. Even right here shows how important throwing the counters are. It's not even like I throw the counters right after. It's not him land, land, I throw back. In this one, it was simply he throws a couple, he lands, he takes an angle, and I just throw back. Letting the hands go and being the person to finish the exchange works so darn well. And we gotta be honest, in the judges' minds, that's the last thing that they remember very often. Who finished the exchange? Very important. And here we go, guys. The decision. End of the fight. Super close, razor thin. I ended up getting it, I believe, by one point on two judges' scorecards, and one person scored it a draw. In the first bout, it was a super close contest as well. He just edged out by one point on a couple judges' scorecards, and I believe a couple people scoring it a draw. Either way, our fights back and forth, they were not great fights. They were not ones where people watch and go, wow, that was an amazing fight. Our styles just don't mesh up well together. We have very, very opposing styles and the two of us just clash in a fight that is not pretty, but this was the hardest win of my career, not only in the sense that just being in there was very tough, but in the sense I had to change up my style a little bit to be able to give myself the possibility of winning. My normal style would have not led me to the victory I got and regaining the glory title. So I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown of this very frustrating, very difficult to win bout against Sergey Adamchuk in the rematch. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a like. If you have not already, join the channel, get subscribed, train hard guys, and I will see you back here soon for another episode.